Welcome to the Diablo Podcast. We are online at DiabloInkGamers.com. I'm your host, Flux, and on the show this week with me is Xanth. Ahoy, hoy. And Oz. Hola. And we're going to talk about some of our recent play stuff and bitch about low-level MP games and leeches. One of, our, one of my guests is a leech, and one of my guests is a leecher. We will probably <laughs> find out which is which. We're going to talk about the recent developer interviews that the Blizzard guys did, one of which I did, and they can both tell me how mine was the best interview of all, and <laughs> a little bit about economy stuff and some itemization stuff, resistances, and a few other topics we may get to if we have time, but maybe not. But first of all, and most importantly, Xanth, you just turned 29 again. <laughs> yeah, uh, celebrating the anniversary of my birth uh, at 30 now, which is a startling prospect realizing you're an adult not that it wasn't yeah, well, before, but it, it feels realer now. If you hadn't had a kid, you could put that off for a few years longer. But yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah, but it, it was a nice day. It was definitely a nice day. So it's August twenty first is Zant's birthday. Everyone can rush out right now and get him an e card. <laughs> July twenty first. <laughs> oh yeah, we're, is that, we're, is I'm a month. I'm a month ahead of myself already. He's gonna wait a while to post this. I'm so ready for <laughs> BlizzCon. I'm just skipping months already. I, I can't stand You're it. You're too excited. <laughs> So was there a birthday celebration last night? Yes. Given that you're on a podcast today. Yeah, there there was. Um, I mean, obviously, it being Sunday now, um, going out on a Sunday night doesn't work because I'm old now. Um, so and you have to get you have to be at work early in the morning. Oh wait. Yeah. <laughs> oh, not in the summer. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a nice little night, uh, a nice surprise party, and all that kind of stuff, and um, was able to kind of unwind, and it was it was it was. It was nice. It was nice to kind of get out and mingle with people, like an adult. And how was your re- recent birthday celebration, Oz? Well, I uh, celebrated my 11th wedding anniversary yesterday, by which I mean my wife and I looked at each other, you know, between chasing the kids around and said, happy anniversary. <laughs> we, we had a dinner kind of two weeks earlier, so uh, <laughs> there, was, there wasn't much celebration uh, yesterday, but, you know. Well, I guess last year was the big one. It's, exactly. Divisible by a zero. So. <laughs> and I celebrated nothing and I'm not married. So next topic. <laughs> what have you guys been playing in the game lately? Any exciting new stories? I have one in a moment, but I'll, I'll seed the floor. How about you, Oz? You can, you can segue into your ec- ec- economic issues as well if you'd like. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, hardcore. Uh, you know, I lost my Witch Doctor, I think, a couple podcasts ago. What level was your, was your dead one? Uh, Infernal Belial got him, so Paragon 4. Oh, just getting your feet wet. Yeah, so I, I went with a Barb next because I wanted something that I could kind of, you know, have some more comfort level with as far as not dying. Um, and I I did beat Diablo, and then I went into some public games to do some farming. I noticed on my way up, like I turned it, when I first hit Inferno, I hit, uh, turned it to MP1 and thought, you know, I, I want to get the density advantages. And that was kind of scary. <laughs> so for the, after I uh, killed Leoric, I turned it back down to zero and then played the rest of the you know, level, rest of Inferno on zero. Then when I started doing, like, oh, I'll just work on some Paragon and, and did some public games, uh, I went back to MP1, and uh, this kind of goes into the comment we made about leeching. I could barely keep up with anybody. You know, I had, I don't know, 20k DPS and oh my God. 530 or so EHP, and I'm just, like, trying to get to the mobs before they're dead and picking up Tomes of Secret on the way. Um, and so I thought, well, I'll try MP2. And if anything, that was worse. <laughs> the people were going even faster, and I was, you know, they're level 80 something demon hunter, you know, blowing things up. Not that I'm complaining; it's a public game, but I just felt like, uh, wow, I'm I'm not contributing here. I'm barely, you know, hey, here's here's you know some more resi- resistances from Warcry. <laughs> you guys, here's some extra resistance just in case. Uh, but things were dying awfully fast, so. You were providing 10% EXP. That was your exactly. benefit game. A little bit game. of gold fine, a little bit of magic fine. <laughs> well, I remember running a, a Conviction Paladin a lot in cow runs, and so the, the you know the Amazons were coming through and killing everything, and I was just picking up gold and the you know occasional scraps that were left behind. Yeah, I used to call those kind of Paladins lampreys when I would play with my uh, Javazon. <laughs> they would just sort of follow you around and pick up your scraps, and but they at least provided a benefit. Unlike in Diablo 3, we were providing nothing but experience. <laughs> And I believe you had a comment on this topic, Zam. Um, yeah, when it, it comes to leeching, and I'm, you know, hearing 20k DPS, you know, in MP1, for me, that doesn't seem like 
it, it would be too out of the ordinary. And I can understand not being able to kind of keep pace. I've been finding, because I've been playing my Witch Doctor, who's um, Paragon 82 right now, um, I've been in a lot of MP4 and MP3 games. Usually I'll, I'll alternate if I can't find MP4, go down to 3, and then you know just kind of switch back and forth. Um, but what I've been finding is I'll you know get a couple good people who are probably pulling 100k or whatever, and then there'll be one or two who are doing substantially less. Um, but it, it's it's very apparent that they're not even trying. Like they're just falling around. They have nothing but magic find equipped. Um, well, they die if they try. <laughs> right, and but they they shouldn't be there. Um, you know, like I know going in, into MP4, like what the risks are and, and what you know what could possibly happen. Um, and it just seems like they're they're hurting me by being there. They're you know like if if something goes wrong, if I lag out or something, I know they're not going to be able to kill anything to keep me alive. Um, I, in fact, the other day, um, there was a leecher that was doing uh, 8k DPS, 8k on um, a witch doctor, with just absolute you know a mix of blues and a couple rares. Didn't even bother to craft anything. Um, was literally there to just try and you know get as much experience as they could at the at the you know price of everybody else in the game, um, and it's one of the things that you don't notice right away because it doesn't come in and you don't see any, anybody's DPS right away. But you know when you see somebody in because we've gotten to the point where gear is very you know it, it's been filtered into the market so you you can look at a witch doctor and you'll see okay there's a Manajuba's you know carving knife there's a Zuni's mask and you. you kind of just have an idea of, of what they're pulling down. And when you see somebody who doesn't look like that, you start to question it. So I didn't even notice at first, but I knew we were going slower. And then, you know, you, you look, jump into town, you look at their profile and you're like, really 8,000 DPS. And then upon seeing it, everybody else kind of notices it too and, and starts to be like, well, we don't want to carry them. Um, well, you can kick them. You can. And, you know, that's, that's actually something I, I hadn't had to do in, you know, months um, but in the past week, I've had to initiate vote kicks probably about eight or nine times. Um, wow. And that's no fun now because you can't MK them anymore. In the old days, you used to love that. Well, you, could, you could murder people. You wrote a whole column about that. Yeah, well, ironically, um, after going to town to inspect the person's gear, you know, I brought it up, you know, because sometimes you could do a vote kick and people don't pay attention and will just say no. I brought it up saying, you know, this person has this low of DPS. Is you know, and you kind of want to you know, approach them and be like, "Hey, is there something you could be doing that could boost your DPS? Maybe you forgot to equip something or or whatever it was." Um, and, God, he's wearing blues. Come on, right? And uh, they were uh, they were trying to explain that they had um, mass hypno hypnosis on their you know skill bar, and they <laughs> they, they had a skill there. They had an item that that reduced it by 15 seconds. Was well, okay. Well, then you still have a 45 second cooldown. Um, that, that doesn't help us. Um, That's and, last breath, by the way. Yeah, the and then the knife. <laughs> so they um, were in the fields of misery, and I think they were typing to explain why they had low DPS or something like that, and then they got killed. Um, well, problem solved. <laughs> right. I'm like, I, I actually I took a screenshot of it. It's going to be in, in in my article that I'm writing, but just my comment. I'm like, well, that's karma for you. Um, I, I I didn't feel that bad because they shouldn't have been there in the first place. Um, and that's the big thing about these public games is I love them, and, and Flux and I have talked about it at length about why you know a public game just seems to work. You get a good mix of people, you're clearing like 500% experience, and and things are awesome. Um, but you throw a couple of people in there that just can't fit the mold, and then you hit a snag, and it does push people away from it. I don't want to say that you need like breakpoints where you need like certain DPS for certain MPs. But at the same time, like you can recognize that you're not being able to pump out what everybody else is, and I, I don't know. I don't know if there's what the fix is for that kind of system, but it, it definitely can be a little aggravating. Are you an elitist scumbag? Yes, uh, basically. No, I think you know, the biggest thing for me, and you know, and I, like I had mentioned before, is when I'm playing in a group, I want to know that these people have my back, you know, and I want that to. Well, they're behind you. Is that the same thing? <laughs> It, it, it might be, um, but you know, I want to know that if something goes wrong, or you know, I've I've got a bunch of people on me, they're going to be able to help me out, as opposed to, you know, just make it more difficult by them being there. How is it that you're not being a horrible person and like MKing them, like getting a big pack there and suddenly just going spirit vessel down some dungeon? Oopsie, bye bye. <laughs> um, 
you just kind of putting up with it and grumbling to yourself? Kind of. Like at the, at the same time, like I don't want to ruin, you know, something. You know, that person who died. I, you know, obviously I feel bad, but like I don't want to ruin somebody else's gameplay. You know, would I prefer that they're not there? Yes, but I'm. I'm even in D two. I was never a PK. I was never out to to kill somebody, even when I had the chance. Um, this is a big thing in WoW and other RPGs where people like will shun you from a party if you're not properly geared, you don't have the right skills, or you know right. we need a healer and you don't have X and Y and Z, so go away. Yeah, so you're bad because you don't have this, and that, and I think that. And you won't, you know, Diablo doesn't really work that way in terms of you know you don't have party roles, but obviously right. if someone's you know got eight, I mean I would I would say 50k DPS is, is too low for an MP2 or three game, and he's got right. 8k, that's just laughable. In MP4, yeah, which is not going to help anybody. When you can't kill the monsters, like even just one or two by yourself, that should kind of signal to you that, like, hey, maybe I put it up just a little too high. I'm going to go down a couple notches and, and see if I can hold my own somewhere else. Cause you, well, they want 500% experience like you do. They right. just can't earn it. Right. So. Yeah, I know. It's the hunger to level up. I know. It's kind of yeah. ironic because I probably would have welcomed, you know, AK DPS in an <laughs> MP1 game that that probably would have helped us both, you know, he, right. if he had some minions and, and such, but instead, like I said, I was trailing around. Uh, I don't think I was slowing anybody down because I could barely keep up. <laughs> right. Right. Well, I think, I, I think that's the difference between like a lower MP and a higher MP too. I mean, MP one, I think you, you're going to be cruising through. You just need one person with like a hundred K DPS or whatever it is. But as you start ramping up and you have more monster hit points, then things get a little more difficult. Yeah, so if you're an MP1 in a four-player game, what is that the, the equivalent of solo? Like MP2 and a half or something? I don't know. Yeah, I would need to look at the chart and break it down. Well, if only I were an expert on this sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, well, the big thing, too, in Monster Powers, especially in the party play, is it, it is different than playing by yourself because the monster health actually is... It, it doesn't gain as much as what it used to. Um, and they don't gain damage with more people. No, they just gain more health. They just gain so, more health. I, and yeah, the, the danger in higher MPs and hardcore is dying. Right, you know? exactly. If you're just grinding on them a little longer, that's probably not going to make your death risk go up too much. No, no. Um, but, you know, AK DPS, I mean, even in hell, that, that could be too low, you know, depending on where so you're at. So maybe in one of your columns, Anth, you could make up a proper list and say you have to have this much DPS and EHP to be on each MP level, and that way we can we can codify that and put it across the forums. And if people are wrong, they'll, then they'll know to expect to get vote kicked. Right. And, and in, in other words, I'll be playing solo player for a while. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be interesting to try to get some kind of guidelines. I mean, I don't think there's any easy solution to that. Right. Unless and, when you create a public game or something in hardcore, it, it, you know, there's some kind of message that came up saying please be courteous to other players, and these are the recommended um, right. DPS levels. Happen. Right, exactly. Right. So, People apparently are braver than me. I, don't, I, don't even, I would never consider going on that level without a really much better character, because you know, if you die, it's like forever and stuff. Right. But, well, like I said, I, was, I, I turned down off of MP1 in, in Act 1, because it's like, eh, some of these white mobs are hitting me pretty hard, you know, the big <laughs> unburied guys and such. So uh, right. I wanted the density. I decided I'd take the safety instead. So. Well, in, the, in this instance with that witch doctor, I mean, they had like 45k health too, and they were doing 8k damage. I'm just, I, I was amazed that they they were like Paragon five or six. I, I was surprised they made it that far. Uh, I had better gear than that in hell. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, and obviously you can't even get into the real gear until level 60. But yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was surprising, and and like I said, it it's not an isolated incident, and I, I think the the thing that makes it worse is because hardcore is already a small spectrum of players, even though I, I do think it's growing. It's not as small as it used to be. No, exactly. It's not as small as, as what it used to be, but it's still not the vast majority. And, and with that, you go into these games, and you're going to run into the same people over and over again. Um, you know, Some of them you become friends with, and, and some of them you just learn to, to look out for. Um, but you don't. You, you, it's not like you're going to have a leecher, and then you'll just never see them again. Um, I was running into those people three or four games, and eventually I would log into the game. I would see that they were there, and instead of dealing with the hassle, I would go and try and find another one. You know, I've made this comment before about the matchmaking system. Is you know, it is a, a good system, but it has its flaws. And and I can leave a game and enter a game about ten times before I find a different you know game in MP3 and Act One to join. So I'm I'm going to be consistently bucking up against the same people who have been giving me problems you know, for 20 or 30 minutes sometimes. 
Well, as you know, I, I asked Wyatt Chang about that exact issue in the, in the interview recently. We're, we're going to talk about the interview in general in a minute. But, and I said, you know, why can't we get named games? And he said, because there's way too many games now compared right. to the old days. And you would try to join a game, it would already be full. Try to join a game, already full, etc. Right. Whereas you're having exactly the opposite problem. Right. Well, I, I keep rejoining the same game by accident. Yeah, I, I can understand, you know, after listening to that interview and, and, and listening to what Wyatt said, I can get it in some respects. Maybe because of the monster power system, you have different games across so many different levels that maybe it would be difficult to do the naming of the games. But there has to be some way that you can do it that once you've left a game, you have like a, a window that to go back to it because it was an accident that you accidentally left. Or you can just be locked out of that game and go and find a fresh one. Um, or, you know, a system where once a game has been created and, and a couple monsters or elites have been have been killed, you can be notified of, of the progress of the game before you enter. And you can choose not to be, you know, put into the pool for that game again. Something like that, I think, could help, you know, ease some of the frustration of consistently finding the same game. One of the biggest problems is that Battle.net serves three different titles currently, right. and you know, and, and others at some point. And the Battle.net programmers are all totally overworked and trying to com combine everything. And one of the things that Lyliria mentioned to us at the uh, fan site summit I was at a month ago was that any changes that involve Battle.net stuff just take a long time, three, four months minimum to get done. Right. So, I mean, you'll you'll notice that we haven't had any achievements added in Diablo three since the game launched. Right. You know, no, nothing for Paragon levels, nothing for anything. That's because achievements are done by Battlenet people, and it's a pretty low priority to put in new achievements for Diablo three. Right. When they're trying to launch, you know, StarCraft expansions and new ladders and and World of Warcraft cash cows and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't even mean this as a critique. It's just this is just how it is. Right. I mean, there's just there's only X number of people, and Bnet is a is a you know a cobbled together system that's constantly. It's like the old joke of science. You, know, you have to rebuild the ship while you're still sailing in it, that kind of thing. Yeah. And they can't just shut down Battle.net for two months and say, hey, we're going to do a rebuild. It's like, uh, no, there's like a billion people that want to play this. So, I, I mean, they, they plan big Bnet upgrades for deadlines and in, in, you know, key things like, say, a Diablo 3 expansion. We'll get ladders or something like that. But they're really unlikely to just add in any features in the meantime. Although we could certainly complain about it and get it on their radar, and maybe they'll work on it for the future. It's tough, though, because if it takes that long, three or four months you have trouble getting up the energy to keep at it that long, you know, if if that's something you're requesting. When there's a dozen other things you'd like to see changed about the game. So that's probably why there aren't very many updates there. Right. Well, cheerful cheerful conclusion there. <laughs> okay, speaking of cheerful conclusions, I played a new Demon Hunter. We did this post on you know, one of the questions I asked Wyatt and um, Josh was about the Demon Hunter squishiness. Right. And Wyatt's answer was that other classes are, are, have other things and we can't answer this question. He kind of ducked the question, basically. And then I put up a news post about it, and we got lots of comments, and there's absolutely no consensus at all. <laughs> More people think it's not a problem than think it is a problem. But it seemed like from reading the comments that a lot of the people were like, well, my softcore Demon Hunter only dies once a game, so it's not so bad. It's like, well, you realize once a game <laughs> is, like, is a problem when you're hardcore, and that's the whole reason I want a, a squishiness prevention. Right. So there's obviously there's no um, consensus on that, and we can't argue people into it. And especially, it'd be interesting to do that vote like in the hardcore demon hunter forum or something to see if anyone really noticed the difference of the replies. Mm. Or maybe we're just hardcore and we're we're wimpy and we want never to die. Right, right. Except when we go to MP3 with 8K DPS. <laughs> but anyway, I've made a new demon, sort of in, influenced by that, and I had been wanting to make a demon hunter for a while. I hadn't played one in months, and I made a new one a few days ago and played like three hours a day for like three straight days, and and. Twinked pretty heavily, not hugely, but quite, but you know, weapons at least, and got and zoomed through, had no real problems, got to level 50, you know, 50s in the hell, you know, all solo, no rushing, because Xanth was out doing his birthday party, so he couldn't help me. <laughs> How many monsters did you kill in your last 10 levels of Demon Hunter, by the way, Xanth, um, getting up to 60? I, I, uh, none, but you know, hey, whatever. I, no, I let you, I let you kill a Demon Hunter, a, a treasure goblin once. Um, oh, that's right, because he was um, sequestered into that room. Um, yeah, he was stuck in some corner. I'm like, let's see how long it takes you to kill this. I was like, the whole rest of the time, <laughs> I believe there was like a level 70 monk doing something, and you were just sort of tagging along like like Oz in a public game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I did it all myself. I got up to kill Belial, no problems. I'm up to level 57 or something, and I'm in Act Three. I've been doing shopping. I haven't actually been shopping. I was like looking at gear, you know, planning out what I'm going to do. I've got this whole list. I mean, I look at my list. I got, I'm looking like an impo, like a mempo and like Nat's boots and Nat's chest and like all the different prices, you know, if, with, with vid and RA, how much is it? With vid and de defense bonus, BK belt, BK pants, maybe Lacoonies, maybe a crafted, looking at a unity, all this kind of stuff. 
So then I go back and play a little bit. I do, I do uh, the keep two and three. Is you know, I'm, I'm just an MP1. I'm play, taking it easy. I'm, I'm almost there anyway. Whatever, no rush. Got my Hellfire ring. Got my, got my ruby in my hat. And I get to level 59.75. And I'm, I just finished keep two. And I clicked on the armory where you go after. You know, you finish the keep, and then Pumpkinhead starts doing one of his holographic lectures. And you click on that one NPC next to the waypoint, and then you run over to the to the armory where Tyrael is gone. Right? That's the next step in the quest. And as I do that. Jinx is like freaking out next to me on the desk, staring past me into the wall. And I'm like, what, what is Kitty doing? I kind of got distracted. I picked her up. I looked over in the corner. I put her in the window. Go back to the screen. And as I posted <laughs> this morning, I'm dead standing on the top of the stairs in the armory at level 59.75. And those stupid little black afterbirth things that come out of the soul stone there killed me. I didn't think, have you, has either, have you really ever taken noticeable damage in that room in your lives? No, because I normally kill everything right away. <laughs> well, that's generally a good idea. Did you even know it was possible? That, I mean, I guess I knew they could actually damage you, but I never even considered that could be a dangerous well, spot. Well, I think the better question is, why didn't you just hit escape if you were in a solo game and pause it? Because I was in town. There's no danger in town. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wasn't even thinking. I'm like, I'm just, I'm just running around town, you know. I mean, that, that, that step takes you one second, and then you go, I was, all, all my thoughts were, do I want to go outside and run into the wilderness, or do I just want to you know, restart a new game and do the keep again just to get to 60? Because once you get to 60, I'm going to totally re-gear. Right. And I was like, my mind was totally in the next step of this, and I was like, eh, I'm not even really thinking about what I'm doing here. Took your eyes and off the prize. Off, quite literally. <laughs> so I, made, I did a post this morning about this, you know, what's the dumbest way you've died in Diablo 3, and there were a few other suggestions, but... Have either of you guys had any really stupid deaths of that nature yet? No. Nothing like that. I, I think Jinx you know, knew you were going to blow all that money and then, and then die in Inferno with your Demon Hunter, so she was trying to prevent you from, from spending all that money. It was, it was a key uh, you know, move by the cat. I, I, well, that is, that is a good point, because I, I was going to spend about $200 million on gear, my price list, and invariably would have died at some point, so probably before I'd made back $200 million in profits. So. Right. But it was actually a money-saving endeavor. <laughs> now, but now you have to spend more money leveling a new demon hunter, and then you're going to spend the money again anyway. Yeah, and I lost a six million gym and some other crap I had on. But even though I hadn't really bought much of anything, I was doing it pretty cheaply. Yeah. Anyway, so that was my uh, that's my exciting recent play style. Oh, and the best part is I, after that, I got, I made the I made the news post about it, and then I went and had a snack, and it was like an hour before I was going to go to bed. I thought, oh, I'll play a little bit more. I'll just do my monk a little bit. And, like, the first boss I kill drops me a legendary quiver, level 63. Mm. I'm like, just, just to F with me, you know? <laughs> like, I, I, what the hell is that called? I'm uh, dead man's, dead man's, yeah. Yeah, it, it's like the best potential quiver for a demon hunter. I, I don't think I've ever actually found one before. I've had really bad luck with quivers. Wow. I don't even pick up rare ones anymore. Right. They just never are any good. No. It was a horrible roll, by the way. I couldn't even sell it. It was, it was literally worse than any of, them, any of them in the entire auction house. Mm. It had a life regen for the random stat, and it was only 11% IAS. <laughs> nice, Ouch. Nice. So it, it, was, it was unsellable. The cheapest ones are 170k, and they were much better than mine. I'm like, okay, this is not going to sell. Yeah. So it was basically just fiery brimstone. But you know, it was, it was funny that the first game I played after the Demon Hunter died with a bunk, they dropped me the best <laughs> potential quiver in the game. Even though I wasn't actually going to use a quiver, I had a shield all planned out. Nice. Uh, the, uh, the other funny part, I was planning this whole tanky build, and when I was doing my shopping... I bid on I t I did total lowball bids on four different items just for the hell of it, saying here's what I want, and almost like so it would be on my menu. So mm -hmm. when I went back and looked, you know, and completed all, it would say failed, but at least I'd say okay, that's what I was looking for, and I won three of them. <laughs> so, wow! You know, six, eight, twelve hours later, I got on today, and I've got Nat's boots and a Unity ring, and I figure out what else I got that you know were kind of what I wanted, but weren't perfect. But you know, like the, the comps were like twenty five, thirty million, and there was one with a no bid out. And I bid like 11 million and won all one three out of four. Nice. So in theory, I saved like 50 million on these purchases, but now you got to use them. Yeah, now it's like taunting me. So anyway, I started <laughs> doing Demon Hunter and got to level 22 already. So <laughs> I played an hour and a half and did Act One and got to level 22. So that's that's where we stand at this point. <laughs> nice. And you and you've got a you made a Demon Hunter Xanth, and you're not dead yet. You're still in, you're, you've abandoned her in Paragon Two or something. Um, no, she's uh, Paragon Five, I think. Um, I it's kind of one of those things that. I, I built her up, and obviously you, you helped uh, rush me through the last 10, but um, I built her up because I was, I was interested in the class, and I, I kind of wanted to, to mess around with it, and it, it's kind of a nice little release. I, I think when, when you start getting into the higher-level Paragons, y you need something else to kind of distract you a little bit, and you kind of lose appreciation for the class that you really enjoy because you're constantly doing the same stuff, and to kind of go and try something that's a little different... 
uh, different play style is, is kind of nice. It's basically the reason why I have all the other characters there. Anyway, I don't, I don't really intend to try and take my wizard or my demon hunter to Paragon, you know, 100, but it, it's fun to kind of play as a palate cleanser to the witch doctor. Um, so it just kind of reinvigorated me to go back and, and play my Witch Doctor. I think one of the biggest things I have been doing lately in game is, you know, now that I've hit uh, Paragon 82, I've got a decent magic find. I'm finding more legendaries. Obviously, I've yet to find the billion dollar drop. Um, <laughs> uh, but I, I'm getting actually pretty close. I'm up to about 700 million now. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that um, by finding just smaller things. You know, I'm, I'm making smaller sales that are getting me there. And that's kind of been the goal. And It'll be, you know, earned the, the real hard way. Um, but what I have been doing is with that bulk of the extra legendaries I find, um, the stuff that's not necessarily sellable or the ones that I would be spending way too much time trying to sell, uh, I just, I have a low-level monk um, that I just load up with all the other stuff and I go into low-level games, usually on the first two quests, uh, first two quests of uh, Act 1. And I, I go into a random game, I look at the profiles and see that they don't have any other hardcore characters, and then I just drop it. Uh, I drop everything I have on that character, usually, you know, stuff that might be motivational for them to, you know, want to get their class going, or it might be seed money for something, um, and just kind of move on. And, you know, some of them will friend me after, and some of them don't. And it's kind of interesting to see their progress. There was actually a witch doctor uh, who friended me um, and is still using, like I dropped like a low-level uh, Mana Jumas and a uh, Thing of the Deep. And they're still using both, and they're Paragon 25. And I, actually, I kind of feel happy about that. I'm like, well, that's kind of cool that, you know, maybe because of that it pushed you, and, and now you're doing really well. You're building your own army. Yeah, slowly but surely. And it's it was one of the things I really liked about D2 was going into random games and, and people would just drop stuff for you. And, you know, from my perspective, I was going to spend far too much time trying to sell that stuff. And I'm not doing a lot of crafting where I need a lot of brimstones anyway. Um, so why not give it away and, and try to keep the hardcore community going? Because for some people, you know, whatever I'm dropping is you know, something they don't have and, and something that they could actually use down the road. So why didn't you hook up Mr. 8K DPS? <laughs> um, he didn't deserve it? Well, that's the thing. is I'm not, He was taking advantage of your generosity? I'm not doing that in an Inferno game. I'm going to the people who are just starting out. I'm going to the people who have been struggling. Who and, also have 8K DPS, oddly enough. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, Except they're in normal. Right. So it's been kind of nice to do that. And um, actually, the last time I did it, I went into a game and somebody else was doing the exact same thing. Um, so this, this little witch doctor, I think they were like level three, um, this other character just dropped everything too, and um, they walked away with a nice haul. So if you're interested in going into hardcore, and you know there are kind people out there, it's not just you know myself um, who are doing those things, and you never necessarily know who you're going to find in, in a random game and, and what they might actually be able to do for you. It's like Christmas in July. Yeah. Um, it, Literally, in this case. I kind of feel it, it helps It helps with your drops, too. You know, it's good karma. Um, you drop a couple of things you don't need, and maybe you'll find something you do. Probably not. No, no not necessarily. <laughs> but, okay, so speaking of items and economy, you have an interesting story on this, Oz. Well, I yeah. I, um, and you're poor and just getting started in hardcore. I am. I got like $5 million, you know, in the stash. And uh, How much of that came from selling TOS? <laughs> none, none. Four and a half of it? No, 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 I don't. I don't. I haven't sold any of those yet. I, I'm still trying to buy them and build up all the, you know, gems that I found on my way up. Kind of improve the rubies and amethyst. So yeah, I switched over. I wanted. I want to get, uh, you know, a Hellfire Ring to help for like future characters. Um, I'm up to about 40k DPS now with some auction house stuff and a couple finds, and so I've been doing key runs, and I also wanted to get the plan. So I fit when I got to Act Three. You know, I was about MP4, and uh, and I, I killed Sedea before I went to the Warden. And out popped a uh, well, a pair of Inna's pants that had 70 all resist. Mm. And I looked on the auction house. There was only one that was close, and it was a little bit better. And it was like sell, listing for $1.4 So I thought about it, and I tried to decide, well, do I want to you know, keep these or not? Um, they're perfect for a demon hunter. 
because you know a monk if you even if you have your resist on it it's almost as good as that and i thought you know i'm gonna kill off a demon hunter pretty quickly so i decided to list them and and uh, you know try to get some money to improve the the barb so the HP yeah, and the DPS. The yeah, that's kind of yeah. That was my thought too. And, and they won't help my barb that much. I've got the Blackthorn pans, and it's like a seven thousand life drop. Those are like the most popular pants in the entire game. And with AR, every class loves them except for the monk, even. So yeah. So, so I, I think so I, I think we really have to focus on. I mean, what's taken Xanth so long to get to a billion? <laughs> but you haven't sold. They haven't sold. No, no, no. They haven't sold. No, no, no bids have come in either. So. So if you sell them for 1.1 or something, you'll be up to 900 million. Exactly. And then you can, then you can, then you can. How many emails can no, you send Xanth? It'll be like 905 million. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Because <laughs> I mean, I was, I was giving serious planning to my demon hunter just last night, and it was about 200 million to get really good gear. You know, I mean, not fantastic, obviously, but really good gear in every slot except for the crafting slots. And that was not including rings or amulet or shoulders or um, gloves, because I figured I would craft those, or I have crafted ones already for that. But you would, you could three hundred million. You could make a really strong, inferno quality hardcore demon hunter. And so obviously you don't want to wear one item that's worth a billion when you've got five million total. Right, know? right. That was my thought. You can equip three really good characters for that much mm -hmm. easily. So we'll see. Uh, like I said, right now it hasn't uh, no bids yet. Well, it only takes one. So. That's right. <laughs> So, what's your biggest sale lately, Zan? You're no no B club for you. Uh, no, I think the biggest sale, like I said, it's been small sales. Um, the biggest one was I found a Shenlong's Fist of Legend with Life Steal on it. It had a de a decent uh, DPS roll, um, and it sold for 150. Um, so, I mean, like the comps on it were around that level. Um, you know, it's it's a kind of a hard item to price because who's necessarily uh, looking for that by comparison to other things, especially with uh, rare fists right now. Um, but I was happy with that. Um, and then just like I said, little stuff. Um, I found a nice two-socketed uh, manticore, and um, I've been I, I found a couple of Manajuma knives that they didn't roll with a socket but just had decent DPS, and those have been selling for like twenty or thirty million. Um, so just random little things that are kind of pushing me. Um, I think the big thing too is, you know, when I first started playing hardcore, um, the big item I got was a witching hour with all res. You know, if I go back and I look at, you know, what I sold it for, which I think was around 150, 200 million, that's probably comparable to what a billion is now. Um, because just the way the currency has fluctuated so much with the, you know, with people switching over and bringing their gold with them and, and wanting to get hardcore gold. And obviously there are those gold selling sites out there as well. Um, the, the economy has really shifted. You know, there was a point when a hundred million or 200 million seemed like a ludicrous amount and like the most anybody really had was a billion. Um, and now it's kind of moving into that spectrum where you know we're getting into the billions and the billions of you know I've seen items going for 15 billion or whatever it is, um, which is ridiculous. Um, and it begs the question of, you know, with the expansion, where do you go with gold? Um, you know, and I think back to that leecher, that 8k DPS person. Is it is that a result of the fact that they were starting out and couldn't afford some of the newer items? Which I would argue is probably not as plausible because the, on the low okay. end you could still you can get awesome stuff oh, yeah. for a million now. Yeah, you can you can get a lot of stuff for cheap, um, but if you don't have any gold, how do you necessarily purchase it? But what happens with those higher end items? Do we just keep going into the into the billions or into the trillions, or is there going to be a new set of currency that's going to override gold eventually? Well, in the short term, they can't actually raise the prices because it's part of the battle net programming. The way they hard coded the whole economic system. Things cost as much as they can possibly cost now. Right. I mean, it's something to do with the programming language. They actually can't just make four billion be the new max. They have to redo a whole thing, and that'll take obviously six to eight years with BattleNet and all, <laughs> which is kind of amusing that way. I guess they in their in their pregame planning, they never imagined anything would ever be, be more than two billion. Apparently. Right. And here we are a year out, and they were people. You know, things were two billion. You know, six months out, and in, in softcore. Yeah. 
and there's already lots of stuff you can't get. I was when I was looking at mempos last night. There's not a single mempo with more than five percent crit, more than four and a half, I think, in the entire auction house hardcore. Oh, the ones that that have because those sell for more than two billion. Right. So no one sells them there. Right. The ones that have six are going. Yeah, they're going off site, and they're, they're even five. I, I mean, there was like two four and a half. So there were a bunch of three and a halfs and four. I saw but... I saw one that that had six percent, and it went for fifteen billion. Well, there you go. Which is ridiculous. And you can get a four percent for one billion. So you know you're paying. You're paying a lot for that actual. You're one. paying fifteen billion for two percent CC. But you know, if you're really at the high end, every percent makes a big difference. Right, and you want to be capped out. So, um, other economy thing that's interesting is Tomes of Secret. We don't want to do too much hardcore economy, but right. I'm actually not pushing hardcore. But everybody who's now doing the podcast has gotten into hardcore. Right. I mean, Oz has just got into it. Nineball just got into it recently. It's like everyone who's still really into Diablo seems to be going into hardcore now. It's just kind of working out that way. Yeah. It's, it's about 75% of my time now, I'd say, yeah. <laughs> Soon to be 99% of your time? Probably. It, it will, you, can't, you can't just, just like potato chips, you can't just eat, eat one or something. Well, I'm like at that. 92 on my uh, softcore witch doctor, so I've still got to get him to 100. But, but it all seems so meaningless. You know? <laughs> True. <laughs> So, um, auction house prices. Tomes of Secret continue to be, I think they were 15K when I was looking today. They were 17K last week. Right. And I, I mean, they were like, you know, 6, 8K for months and months in hardcore. Mm-hmm. And then around the last patch, they were even less than that. Right. And I, and I figured they would drop in V108 because with the monster density, you can find so many more. Mm-hmm. But apparently, there's just so many people coming into hardcore and so much gold coming into hardcore in uh, one way or another. Right. Well, I, I think you, you know, we've talked about this too. When somebody dies, they need new gems, and those gems are going to need new t- new tomes to to be created, and it just and new craft. Yeah, it, it just eats them all up. Um, and you know, I never really hold on to them anymore because I, I usually sell them once I get like a stack of a hundred or two hundred. You know, I'll check the price and, and make sure. But I'm I they sell almost instantly. You know, for whatever the the price happens to be. Um, like I, I'll even toss it up like by a hundred or so, and it, they'll be gone relatively quickly. Like they they sell very fast. And I think that part of the reason, you know, there's obviously a lot of demand for them, but you can't farm them anywhere except for hell. I mean, I mean, in Inferno. Right. You can you can trade ten to one for you know the hell books, the, but you know that's obviously ten of those is a, is a long time to pick that up. Right. So I think I think a lot of the gold farming we see is people running bots in like Nightmare and Hell, where they can just have a big pickup radius, and you know if it's going for 24 hours a day, you don't need massive in, massive amounts at a time to add up. No. But you're not going to add it up with those books. So I I think there's not a lot of farming of Tomes of Secret except for Oz and Public Games, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and just you know, they you lose a lot. I mean, you, you're making shoulders or something. You're using up ten, fifteen, twenty at a time. Right. I mean, I think it. I, mean, I don't have the figures in front of me, but to make a a radiant, I mean, to make a marquee gem is like over five thousand tomes of secret. Right. And then yeah, which is a lot. Yeah. It uh, and it takes a long time too. Um, but it it's very interesting to watch the prices fluctuate. Obviously, it goes up on the weekends because more people are playing and more people are purchasing them. So you almost kind of want to hold out until it's the weekend because you know the prices will be up a bit more. Um, but then it, sometimes it's just an odd spike. You know, like you'll log on and you know early on it'll be eleven thousand in the morning, and then by night it's up to you know fifteen, sixteen. So you just kind of want to hold on like to if, them. If you see it under twelve, you ought to buy them now. It seems like because they'll be eighteen again before too long. Right. If you if if they fall below ten, then just buy as many as you can because if they uh-huh. if they shift upward to eighteen again, you're looking at Eight thousand, you know, per book, and then you know, take off the fifteen percent. A friend of mine who uh, just lost his hardcore barbarian yesterday. He he estimated he had two point nine billion in gold on him in value, mm. which is you know two pairs of pants for us, but that's a lot of money for most people. <laughs> Ouch. But we'll get into that in a, that whole topic in a second. But he said that he had bought I don't know thirty something, forty thousand tomes of secret months ago when they were like five k a piece around the time of the patch, and he finally sold them all last weekend. He sold like thirty seven thousand last weekend. I haven't added up that profit, but I mean, it was, I, it was I, many hundreds of millions. I, I did the math, and I, I figured out the cost to purchase, and I figured out the, you know, the selling, and even with the 15%, he would have made at least $300 million. Wow. Yeah, which is, which is nothing if he's... Right. I mean, you look, at, you look at someone's character and their entire, you know, every gym and their armor is a radiant star. Right. Which are, you know, 120, sorry, 50, 45, 50 million apiece in hardcore, right. so... 
if you've got 300 million in gyms and your chest piece and your pants, you know, yeah. you're obviously on a different financial reality than most people are. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, like you mentioned, Flux, you get you run into the tier issue where, okay, I can buy this really nice 200 million item, but you know, I can't buy five of of the next level up because they're all a billion. So even right. if he, he got the three hundred million, he still he can he still has to decide what do I want one slot or do I want to get you know several of them. See, and, and I think that's where one of the you know the underlying market there is this hidden market out there that that has an appeal then, and that's buying unidied items. You know, I may not be able to afford a you know fifteen billion mempo, um, but I might be you able. No, surprisingly not. Um, but it's I, your birthday. Uh, well, nobody gave me any gifts, um, but. I might be able to, you know, swing a uh, hundred million on an unidentified one that could turn out to be, you know, a fourteen point nine billion gold profit. Um, and I think that's that's a, a market that's really picking up steam right now because, you know, you said it yourself. You you found one of the best quivers for a demon hunter, but then it rolled the worst roll possible. Well, what's the value of it before you found out the stats? what would somebody pay to have the option to ID it? And there are people out there that want that. Um, and it's, I wrote a post about it a while ago, but if, if that could be an option eventually in the auction house of selling unidentified items like commodities and kind of bringing that gambling function back, and they could even toss a ridiculous auction house markup on it to eliminate more gold from the economy as well. I think one of the perks of, of selling unidied stuff is you're not using the auction house now, though, so you're not right. paying 15% of $50 million or whatever. Right. Well, there is that perk, too. Um, and then sometimes, you know, we all have those items we want to find that just don't roll for us, and it's kind of nice to be able to, like, oh, cool, I have that. And actually, that's how I got my uh, managing was knife that I have now. Um, I bought three of them unidied, um, and I did them all, obviously. I think it sent me back like 120 million for you know 40 million a piece or something like that. Um, and the last one was 909 DPS with an open socket, which was perfect. It's still light on the spectrum by comparison to like a 900 or 1000 DPS, but it's still. I would think the knife falls in the 300 to 400 range, um, and I got that for much lower than the what I would have had to pay for it had it been. On the auction house, plus the other two sold for maybe twenty million a piece as well. You got very good luck on your RNG there, though. I I, I definitely did, um, but you know it's that kind of you know you look at what Diablo two had. You had Geed and you could gamble, and and that's what it kind of brings back to it is being able to gamble a little bit on an item that has a potential to to roll really well, or to not. In theory, that's crafting. But anyway, you were going to say something, Oz? In one of those early uh, public games that I was uh, leeching in, I found a man of Jumas, <laughs> and somebody offered to buy it, and I did. You know, I posted it, and uh, I thought, I don't even know what I would ask for. So, is there like a place, you know, uh, a resource that you can find out what would a man of Jumas go for? <laughs> every everything that I've found in terms of like how you price one of them is you look at what the lowest one sells for kind of like what a bad roll would sell for and you multiply it by three. Okay. And that's then a good rule that, of thumb. That, that's kind of, you know, that way if, you know, middle of the pack kind of, then you'd probably be okay. Um, but the lowest on almost everything now in hardcore right. is like 500K. And I think that that's the problem. You know, when it was first coming out, you know, it, it wasn't as big of a deal. But now that there is such a proliferation of, of items into the economy, I don't know if times three holds out. Because obviously you look at a man of Jumas and you can probably find one for a million or maybe even less. Um, and based off of that, you multiply it by three, that's only three million when you know it has the, the potential to go much higher. So maybe there is a better you know, way to go about doing that now. But at least when it was first going, I, that's what I had seen. I mean, you can go I mean, you can go on to the gamers forums. You can go on to the regular forums on uh, Diablo3.com uh, and, and you, know, you can gauge it out there and people are happy to voice their opinions. There kind of are certain benchmarks in, in terms of what people will pay um, for those unid items. There is a, you know, there's a hardcore trading forum on both our website and on the official one. Can confirm that the the lowest roll will go for under a million dollars, right? Or under a million gold, because <laughs> I did end up IDing it and selling it for I don't know two hundred thousand, something like that. Yeah, not even money. Nope. nope.
I remember back before you were even doing hard Oz, it was 300k for 300k for the cheapest fiery brimstones. I mean, right. that was the basic. And they were they were 200 for a while. Now they're you know 32 or something. But but as we were saying about the, selling the 90 gear is you know I think you're hoping for a jackpot, not just for a medium you know middle of the road thing. Right. And as we've been saying, the the range on prices has gone insanely. I mean, you you can get a cheap mempo for you know 10 million now, 15 right. million. Where that where and the best ones are 15 billion. Right. So, Whereas at the beginning of this patch, if you even found like a, a mediocre mempo, you were looking at maybe 50 million. Or like you know yes. before before 1.08, like if you found a vile ward, that was a guaranteed 40 million, depending on how it rolled. I like I had a streak where I found like three vile wards in a row, and the highest one sold for like 120 million. Um, you know, which again was a, was a decent amount at the time. Um, but now, I mean, a vile ward is is relatively useless unless it's you know an amazing, amazing roll. But uh, a mempo, they're becoming more and more common. You're finding them. I think what the cheapest one maybe ten, nine million somewhere in there. Yeah, it depends what the stats are, obviously. But right, I mean, much cheaper. I mean, the first one I bought, you know, for my first my first uh, monk, I wanted one with arcane because I couldn't afford CC. And I think I paid 60 or 55 or something for it. And then like two months later, I had to buy, I bought the same thing again for my another mo next monk, and I think I paid 27 or 29. Right. So it had fallen by half in two months, and they're probably cheaper than that now. It's funny, I was looking, I sold you one, I think it was the Intelligence with Pickup Radius yep. for 20 million, like two months ago. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously we, neither of us paid the 15% uh, to Bobby, so that was uh -huh. nice, but... But I was looking last night, pricing ones, and there were like three pickups in the whole auction house, and the cheapest one was like 45. Right. So there were no intelligent intelligence ones, and I was looking. There, were, there was a dex and two strengths. Right. So this, some of these with unusual mods really vary a lot. Right. But especially when there's only one mod on an item. It's like you can get a pretty good, like on the Coonies or something, you know, when you get three different mods, and they fall pretty often. There's sort of a, you know, there's lots of them kind of at a sliding scale. You right. know, like every every ten bid, you can see the price going up or something. But right, well, I, you get I, you get ones that only have one mod and they don't drop that often, and you know you get really weird. It's hard to get a pricing range. I really wish you could look at, you know, here's the last ten of this item that sold with this stat on. Like looking at eBay auctions, you well, can look at you know pr past sales. Or like with you know what you, you see with Tomes of Secret, the last ten sales of this were at this level. Um, but yeah. you know, obviously, there's probably a lot of infrastructure that would have to go in because our, you know, the stats vary so much. Um, and uh, you bring up Lacuni too, and that was another item that was godly uh, before crafting. And now I found one that was actually really good. It's got strength and vit and AR, and it it just won't sell. Um, Can I have CC? Yeah. No, it's got CC on it too, and it just won't sell. Hmm. Um, or no, it's Dex vit CC, um, and it. it and AR, yeah, and won't sell. I, I, I've had it low as like, I think I, I think I have it up there like twenty five million, and, and nobody's buying it. Well, if it was ten million, it would sell. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, I bought it, I bought one with those stats, but I, I seem a better roll for I think seventy five or eighty when I was first when I first had my B club thing a few weeks ago. Right. And it was it was comparable to other ones, so it wasn't. I didn't find it got ripped off on it. Of course, no one ever feels that way. Right. I only sell it when I sell things. Right. But, you know, your item's only is worth as much as what people are going to pay for it. As, uh, as Oz is finding out right now. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of, of all these money stuff, a friend of mine I'm talking to who, who just lost his three, three billion barb, he said he keeps Excel records of everything. And he was like, he, we were talking about Hallowed Defenders, the crafted shield, mm -hmm. which, he, which he produces and sells. And he said, I just sold my 99th one. And I'm like, I'm, I thought he was joking. He's like, no, I've actually sold 99 of them. I have an, I have an Excel document. I've made 514, and I've sold 99, and the average sale price is $6 million, and I, I've made this much profit. I make about a million and a half profit on each one total. Hmm. I'm, like, I'm like, you really? He goes, yeah, I have, I have a second monitor running, and as soon as I sell, buy, sell anything, buy anything, you know, he, he actually enters the stats of everything he sells and buys. I mean, not everything, but at least the major stuff. Wow. And he, he knows exactly how much all his gear cost, what he paid for it, when he paid for it, how much experience he gets in every game? He enters his starting and ending, and what kind of run he does. So he knows what's most, what's most, you know, efficient. Hmm. And I was like, you know, I have occasionally written down some numbers, and I'll check my <laughs> past auction sales once in a while. Right. And at times, I will, I will mark experience, like I'm trying a different build or trying a different area, and comparing Act One to Act Two or something. I'll, I'll write down my experience and the time. But it's on a little scrap of paper by the side of my computer that I throw away a week later. You know. Right. And I wonder, either of you guys have made any sort of effort like this to actually notate and keep records, and do you wish you had? Hmm. No. 
Is that no to both or no uh, to the first? I, there have been games, and and uh, heck, I would run some kind of some spreadsheets even in D two, but you know, any more, I you know I get two to three hours maybe a night if I'm lucky, and it and it's just got to all be <laughs> in the game or or you know selling something on the on the auction house. So no, I don't. I don't take the time for that. I do read posts about it. You know, I, I do appreciate people who who uh, make that effort to note it and post it, but I haven't done any myself. Do you have stat interview now, Zam? Um, no, I, I teach uh, English, um, not math, and Excel spreadsheets are, are not fun for me. Um, so to be doing something like that, actually, it, so, it sounds like I'd be doing work um, <laughs> for a game that I, I like playing. Um, I occasionally, you know, I'll go in and, you know, you and I were discussing experience gains in, in different games the other night as you were trying out a different run and I was arguing, you know, public games, uh, just seem to be the quickest. So I'll go in, I, I kind of like to know in, in a, in a really good public game, like I know how much experience I should have gained and, and how quickly, um, but never, never to the point of, uh, notation. Maybe we're just not nerdy enough. I mean, I'm obviously, people. some people enjoy this, and I can see there being some benefit, but I just don't care enough to do it. I wish I did in some ways, but I don't. I, I, for me, I think it, it's just, like, it's too much quantification. It, it's too much, like, notation of everything and, and then, you know, trying to replicate that consistently. And, you know, sometimes I just like to mess around and, and just play and, and not necessarily worry about, well, this run's going to be inferior now because I stalled in town for 10 seconds and my, you know, my experience is going to go low. I, I'm just... I kind of just want to play and, and not necessarily worry about that. Do you wish the game kept this record for you? I mean, some games are very stat and you know oriented and statistics on how many kills. I mean, it would be interesting to see, you know, if you could somehow look at it and say, you know, my last ten games in Act Two, how long were they and how much experience did I get? Well, I, I think it's interesting. And you could actually find out, you know, okay, this game you made five million more experience in the same amount of time. What did you do, do differently? And you think, oh, that's what I should do in the future. There are those stats there. I'm at least in some respects, like there's some weird stats that you can see when your character's dead that you can't see when they're living. Like even something as simple as like the amount of gold you picked up. You know, like yeah. you go into your Hall of Heroes and you can see that this character picked up, you know, I looked at my dead monk the other day. Um, he had picked up 44 million in the course of his life. Um, but I have no idea what my witch doctor has done, which I assume has got to be more by now. Um, you know, well, we're we'll, we'll going to find out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but you know, those little things would be kind of interesting or, um, yeah, or that experience gain, you know, I have an idea that obviously I've, you know, been faster, uh, getting to 82 than what I was with my monk getting to 72 because I know the hours played. Um, but there's nothing really that, that would give me that information in terms of XP gain or something like that. And it would be, it would be nice to kind of know. I mean, I know I'm getting an X amount of bonus experience per game, but I don't know how much I got in that game unless I'm being the one to notate it. 417%. Uh, <laughs> now you know. Yeah, well, there we go. Boom. So speaking of numbers in games, something I've wondered about, what if they showed your EHP, your effective hit points in the game? They show, you know, your your stats, your regen rate, your leech, your LOH, your hit points, etc., but they don't factor everything in together. And if you look on a site like our Diablo3Ladders.com, you can see your EHP. And I was looking at some other monks, comparing them to mine recently, and one by the same guy who I just mentioned whose uh, barbarian died, he has a level 80 monk who has 1, 100, 100, sorry, 1,500,000 EHP. And I was like, that's a damn lot. Wow. My monk had like 780 hmm. at that point without, without his best survival gear. I'm like, what the hell has he got that's so much better than mine? And he didn't have that many more hit points... He had a little more LOH, but one thing that was a really big difference, he had 20, 27 or 28 percent blocking on his shield. Right. And I had I don't know 18 or 19 percent because he had a Hallowed Defender that he made himself <laughs> one of his one of his 512 makes or whatever. And so I think there's some stats like blocking percentage that are really undervalued. You don't really see that in the game, obviously. Right. When you look at a new shield with blocking percentage, it doesn't say you know here's how much. I mean, you know, you get the comparison on defense, but that's just on defense and resistance. That doesn't and vitality. That doesn't tell you anything about blocking percentage. Right. And I think if you actually saw your EHP in the game, I was actually going to ask Wyatt about this in the interview. I didn't have a chance to, but we're going we're going two parts here, by the way, because we haven't gotten to like the main topic yet. <laughs> we're already fifty four minutes in, so this may be in part two when you're listening to this. Enjoy. I hope you like part one. We'll let Az talk more in part two. Okay. No, we won't. But anyway, <laughs> you can answer this one first, Az. So, can you imagine? Do you look at your EHP? Do you worry of these kind of stats on stat tracking sites that give you more information than you see in the game itself? And if not, do you wish you were? Yeah, I use a. Uh... 
usually go to d3up.com and uh i do pay attention to that for the hardcore especially i look at all you know all of them but um yeah that i think you're right i think that would be good to get in the game it's just it's still hard to get all of it because like you say then you have life on hit and life steal and how does that really you know factor in because that can change well that's what ehp does it factors it all in so oh i didn't realize that even even life steal yeah, EHP factors in everything. Factors in regen, vitality, defense, resistances, all that stuff goes into one big number. Interesting. I mean, so basically you have DPS that factors in, you know, your crit chance, sure. your crit damage, your dexterity, your attack speed, everything else. It doesn't really work, you know, it's still limited. I mean, if you have a Castone of Jordan, you know, you, you get a big drop in your DPS because it, it doesn't know to factor in, you know, it, you know, bonus damage to elites or... My monk has a has a sweeping wind. I think it's eleven percent bonus to sweeping wind damage, which doesn't show up anywhere in your DPS. But that makes a huge difference. I mean, I've tried that. I tried it. I had a cheap one that was, I think, three or four percent sweeping wind. Then I spent like fifty million to get one that had eleven or ten percent, and it was really obvious difference in you know overall killing speed. It was like three minutes faster to clear a couple of like ten minute levels. But that made no difference at all in my DPS display. So that's not a perfect number by any means. But right. Yeah, but that's I think also. EHP, I think there are undervalued stats people don't really know to notice that much, like blocking percentage. And if there was EHP in game, it might show that, and people would know to value better, to value their gear better, in much the same way that now that you get the comparison when you're using the auction house, it makes it. You know, if, before you'd have like a ring with dex and crit chance, and you're looking at one that's good, that's got IES and crit damage, and there's no way in your head you could say which one was better, you know. And now you see a little green number or a little red number, and it tells you a lot. So go ahead, Oz. I was just gonna say I think that would be quite. I mean, it would be beneficial, especially if you're, you know, again, maybe back to the auction house for better or for worse. But if you're looking at, okay, how much would that Im- improve? Because obviously armor rating goes into that too. And there, there are several factors that could, you could say, well, I can drop uh, 20 vit on this new item and it'll actually take my EHP up. Do you want it, Xanth, or do you know enough you don't need that? I think I can see why it's not in the game. Because it is, it, it, I mean, it's not something that you can necessarily explain in just a couple of seconds. Like, I think everybody can look at damage per second and just be like, oh, okay, that's the, that's the damage I do. Um, but Except when it's a lie. Well, yeah, exactly. But I think with effective health, I mean, you're looking at so many different things coming in that maybe it would, be, it would take a lot more explanation as to how it works. Uh, I'm, on the you know, flip side of the coin, I'd be totally for it because I, I can definitely agree that it would be nice to kind of see those hidden, hidden bonuses and how it would, you know, how it would affect you and, and to see those gains um, as opposed to having to kind of go and figure it out yourself. Um, so I can see the, the pros as to, as to why it should be in. I, I can kind of get why they wouldn't put it in, you know, you know passing that grandmother's test, if you will. Um, but I, I could see where it would have some utility, especially playing some of those squishy classes that you're trying to figure out, you know, how did this happen and, and what could I have done? And you can look at your gear and be like, well, this this should work. You know, what was I missing? And then you, you brought up block percentage. You know, one of those little things. I think that plays really effectively into hardcore too, where, you know, I'm, I can't speak for too much from softcore's perspective, but I'd imagine shields aren't getting used uh, that often, whereas in hard, At all. yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, whereas in hardcore, it, it seems to make more sense, you know. And I think most people, you know, who aren't using that kind of calculation are are picking up shields because they just think more defense, not thinking of the effective health percentage that you're actually getting as a result of it uh, in tandem. And and maybe that visualization can help people stay alive in hardcore. Though again, that's a different conversation. You could argue that people aren't dying enough anyway. I don't think I buy the complicate, complicated thing, though. I mean, they can always bury it. I mean, if they're going to bury, you know, um, elective mode, why not just bury, here's an EH, full EHP calculator for the people who really want to dive in and, and uh, understand their characters. Well, the DPS one isn't even correct. I mean, you look at, like, a, like the one long Kim, the uh, monk fist, which adds lightning damage. That doesn't show up at all in your DPS. Right. Whereas, you know, Sweeping Wind is lightning damage and Fists of Thunder are lightning damage. It's the, the two most popular monk skills, except right. for maybe, uh, you know, for whom the bell tolls. <laughs> but that, I mean, one long Kims are much more valuable than they appear. Ones that are like 850 or 900 DPS will be like 60 million in the auction house. As long as it's whereas got a some, socket, y- too. Yeah, whereas some other, you know, you see other Fists for, you know, 1150, you know, 1050 damage, and they're, you know, 5, 5 million. Right. And if you didn't know, you'd be like, why is this one that has absolutely nothing on it? It's 200 lower DPS. 
why is this selling for more? And it doesn't show it that it's higher when you hover on it. It just doesn't know. So you just have to kind of know or else use a site that, you know, shows your stats more directly than the, what you get in the in-game DPS, which is not, you know. We had this whole thing in Diablo 2. It was called the LCS, the Lying Character Screen. <laughs> <laughs> and because there were there were many things that were not shown correctly on it. If you look in the in the DiabloWiki.net slash LCS, it explains and has some examples. I don't remember them off the top of my head, but there were lots of errors in the Diablo 2 character screen, mainly because the order of operations was incorrectly calculated on lots of stuff they added in. Synergies and other multiple levels of things. You know, it would add your stat and then it would multiply it by other things and they would, those weren't done correctly and people just figured out like, I think smite damage was the biggest one. It, it's, it showed totally wrong numbers for smite damage for paladins. Hmm. But I don't, feel, I don't think that the Diablo 3 one shows things wrong exactly. It just doesn't calculate all the variables, like bonus damage to two types of elemental damage, such as you get with Stone of Jordans or with the uh, WLK. And you both agree completely. 100%. I'm sitting here thinking, have I brimstone some, you know, some of those monk weapons that I shouldn't have? Maybe I did. <laughs> Well, always check. <laughs> Once you check enough, you kind of get used to what things are worth, you know? And right. I think people overvalue and undervalue things as well. You can, you can still definitely find market inefficiencies. One I, oh, one I noticed last night, I was, I was looking at unities, you know, dexterity unities for my future uh, demon hunter, and who's now a little further in the future than I would like. But, <laughs> and you know, there, there's all kinds of different stats. I was looking at like, vitality. Res all ones cost a fortune, obviously, you know, hundreds of millions. And so the only other stat that's of any use, I'm looking at vitality. And the vitality ones are really expensive. There was like a 38 or a 40 vitality for like 3, 4 million, 5 million. And then if you went to like 60 or 70 or 80 of it, they were like 15, 20, 25 million. And so I searched on ones with sockets. And there, was, there were ones with sockets that were 15, you know, 12, 15 million. And there was one up for a bid, and I bid 5 million on it, and I, I got it. That was one of my undervalued bids. Mm -hmm. And of course, I've got, you know, I guess you have to count what the gyms cost. But I've kind of got a bunch of gyms already sitting around, so it doesn't really seem like money exactly. And I can put a 50 vitality gym in there with you know for free basically. Right. I already have the gym, and so the ring I spent five million for this ring with a socket, and I would have spent 15 million for this ring and 60 vitality. It's like well I just saved 10 million and got you know five less bit or something. Okay, you just heard part one of the show. Part two will be posted in a couple of days, and it's the second half of this. Actually, it's about, it's about the last two-fifths of this. We, this one went a little longer because I didn't want to cut the, the whole conversation about stats and EHP and DPS and stuff in half. Part two starts off with conversation about the recent run of Diablo 3 developer interviews. I conducted one of those with Wyatt Chang and the uh, game director, Josh Mascara. By the way, his name is pronounced like mascara with an O in the with an O instead of an A. Uh, that would be the first A, not the second A, which would be Josh Mascaro. He is Josh Mascara. I was told that by uh, Lyria when I was at Blizzard, so that that must be true, because she would never lie. And uh, Xanth and Az are going to give their feedback on the interview that I did and some other interviews of late and the enhanced communication we've had lately. And we talk also a lot about the shared Paragon system, which I am calling Sharagon, and I urge you, urge you to do so as well. And that leads into a whole debate about Magic Find and how it's not coming from gear and how we think it should be or maybe not, and if you should have to make sacrifices to get Magic Find or just get it for free for grinding. And we talk a lot about itemization in Diablo 3 and how it should be changed in the future and how it works now and, or not, and a few other stuff. So check back in a couple of days for that, and thanks for listening. Moo.